Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be discussing the pharmacy board exam and how I studied for it. Some tips and advice that I'd like to give you guys. So it is a six part exam, six modules with 100 items each, different subjects and different coverage, different time given to answer each subject and different weight percent for each module. So let's get right into it. Module 1. Pharmaceutical Chemistry This module is the heaviest weight-wise, but it is also for me the most straightforward. There is not much need for analysis. Let's start off with general chemistry. For general chemistry, you need to understand the principles because these will underlie the other parts of chemistry. So it'll be like the atoms, the structure, and the types of reactions and examples under them, the bonds, and so on and so forth. There's some terms and some people that you need to know, but these are easy. You just need to make it into a story format in your head. Like, oh yeah, this guy discovered a proton, but then under him were these people and this guy discovered the electron. For general chemistry, simple reading and repetition of the reading will do. Next, inorganic chemistry. First of all, I have to say that you have to love the periodic table. You don't love it, you learn to love it, okay? Aside from the periodic table, which will help you all throughout inorganic chemistry, you have to know common names, um, elements, their common compounds, their common uses. So they have groups, like for example, aluminum will have certain uses like astringent, antiperspirant, deodorant. And then its compounds basically have the same general uses. That's how you make it easier to study this subject. Note that you have to be careful. You have to differentiate the compounds well. There are a lot of sound-alike and look-alike uh, compounds like potassium bitartrate. It is cream of tartar, but potassium carbonate is salt of tartar. So you have to be careful and work your way, work your memory around those. What I recommend for inorganic chemistry is extensive reading because there's going to be a lot to be covered. But then it's just reading and familiarizing and again, repetition is key. What also helped me was sticking my notes on the walls so I can remember them better and associating the words with fun mnemonics or fun events. Then we have organic chemistry. Do your best. I know it's really difficult, even for me it was difficult, but we have to do our best to understand the reactions that are going on all the halogenation and the hydrohalogenation and the nucleophilic and electrophilic, I hate that stuff, but just do your best. More importantly, I think, are, the, are knowing the classifications, like alkanes, hydrocarbons, carboxylic acids, and things like that. Those, I feel, are important, and I really try to familiarize myself with those, as well as how to name the compounds and specific properties like boiling point increases with this and decreases with this and alcohol for example up to carbon 8 things like that and we also have the structures for the medications the drugs for example the antibiotics i what i did was i drew them some of them not all of them it's impossible to draw some of them so i drew them like the penicillins and the cephalosporins and the common heterocyclic structures, I drew them out and I put them on the wall. So whenever I would have my study break, I would look at them and like, yeah, that's penicillin. And when you add this, it becomes this or its classification changes, things like that. Knowing the structure and the structure activity relationship and what happens to the active component is really helpful with the MOA and what happens to the drug or what it can treat, which will really help you in module four as well as module six microbiology. Next up is my favorite module two, 
Pharmacognosy. So, module two is pharmacognosy and biochemistry. It's my favorite because I just, I love studying it. And not to brag, but I am bragging. My friends called me the... Wait. <laughs> no, that's not it. The pharmacognosy queen. Yeah, I think that's the symbol. Because scientific names, they would just stick to my head, really. And everything about the plants, I don't know why. I love plants. So yeah, first things first for pharmacognosy is familiarize the scientific names and the common names. Just, you know, read over them every day, every now and then. Have your little cards if those help you. Um, knowing the Latin meaning behind the names is also helpful with associations. As well as fun mnemonics like Alexandria Senna is a uh, cutifolia. So cutie si Alex or... Like for the difference between Asian and American ginseng, Asians are like Panax ginseng. So they're like normal, I guess. I don't know. And American ginseng is Panax kinkifolius because Americans are kinky. Things like that. Another very important thing is to know the classifications, master the classifications. Whether it be volatile oils, glycosides, tannins, alkaloids, just master it. This will help you in knowing the uses, in knowing the components. If you're asked for what is the component of the plant or the use or the effect, because there will be matching type questions and sometimes they use the common name, scientific name. Sometimes they say, okay, what's the use of this or what's the classification of this? So master this. Next up for biochemistry, know your pathways. You have to know your pathways. What I did, I drew them out on paper, I put arrows, I put different colors, how, how I can remember it, and I stuck it on that, the other door. There were a lot of questions on glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So what you need to do is, you have to be able to visualize it in your head and make stories. Not only know the pathways individually, be able to connect them. And if there's something you don't understand, Go to YouTube, go to Google. I did that all the time and I would just listen to it. Even if I already watched the video like five times, I would watch it again to solidify it in my brain. Macromolecules as well, which you need to read up on. Their synthesis, their metabolism and things like that. There's also structures and types under that. I just, I always got confused with the structures of the proteins. You have to know the tests, the results, what they're used for and what the positive re results should be. Note that the time is limited for module 2, you only have one and a half hours and many people told me that they didn't finish in time. So maybe if you want me to make a video on exam taking techniques, like how to actually handle the exam while you're taking it, I'd be happy to help. On to module 3. I'll start off with pharmaceutical calculations. One thing I have to say is that even during the review, when we had classes on pharmaceutical calculations, I wouldn't really listen. Because as long as I have the answer right, and I know that I did it effectively, and I know I was sure of the way I solved it, the way I solved it will remain to be the way I solved it. You have to have your own way of solving things, which is easy for you, because if you try to adapt to the way they solved it, it's, it's not always going to work and you're not always going to remember it and it might mess up what you already know. So believe in the way you calculate things. That is, if it's correct. Master ratio and proportion. Ratio and proportion will let you solve so much you don't even know. You also have to know allegation as well as ratio strength and percent strength and how to convert between the two. As for the conversion systems, I knew them by heart already in college, so you should also. There's um, fun like number combinations to remember them, but I don't know those. I just know it by heart. Can't recite it, but if you ask me, I, I will be able to answer. 
Um, also no Latin abbreviations, which is also part of hospital because sometimes they let you, it's either decipher or calculate with the Latin abbreviations. And you have to know the units and expressions because they, they might confuse you with drams and ounce and so on. For clinical and hospital, it's really just analysis, reading and understanding. What I did was read my notes and read more on pack-up questions and Quizlet questions because this is sort of my weakness. Module 3 and Module 5 were my weaknesses and they were quite heavy subjects. So if this is your strength, then good for you. If not, just keep reading. I realized I have to split my video into two parts. The next video will be on modules 4 to 6. If you want to watch that, the link will be in the description box down below. I hope this video helped. Feel free to comment and see you in the next video.